Today I will be showing blood spatter patterns by shooting and hitting watermelons with various objects. The first blood spatter pattern will be from a 45 hollow point pistol shell, pistol bullet. The second will be from a 12 gauge shotgun, 8 shot shell. Third will be from a from an axe, rather large axe, and then fourth will be from an aluminum baseball bat. The first weapon of choice that we are using is a 45 caliber pistol with hollow point shells loaded into it. Fire, fire, fire. Alright, now we chose watermelons that were about head size. So, had you been shot in the head by that bullet, this is about all that's left. Now, the blood spatter patterns, from the wind they kind of went up and left, and from where the bullet had entered, these go in an upward direction, in a, in a bit of a line shape. This right here, would be parent drop and all these little ones here around it would be the spatter from that drop the second weapon of choice is a 12 gauge shotgun loaded with 12 gauge 8 shot shells fire 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 Now again, this one's supposed to be a head-sized watermelon. So had this been your head, uh, you would most certainly be dead. This, this is all that's left. Right, and then the blood spatter. There are little bits of brain matter stuck to the sheet. Here, again, it is kind of, it isn't really in a set pattern like it was with the bullet. It just kind of flared out, kind of evenly in both directions. But there seems to be a bit more over here, and it is in a bit of an oval pattern. Here would be the parent drop, and out from that, kind of just out this way, will be just a bit of the spatter from that smacking the wall or whatever surface it hit. Okay. Next up on the list is this axe, which I will attempt to drive straight through the middle of the watermelon. Here's the swing of the axe onto the watermelon. And as, as with all the other weapons, had this been your head, you would be dead. This is half of what your head would be. Now, and then here's another chunk of the head. Now most of the spatter did not go on to the little backdrop here, but more onto the bucket. The blood spatter just went all over this bucket. There are drops everywhere, it's running around. But some of the spatter that did get on this, here is where it started and it just goes down the back. Here would be where the parent drops were and they just ran down the backdrop. And the final weapon of choice for this experiment is this aluminum baseball bat. It has no sort of edge, so rather than being a chopping weapon, it is more of a blunt weapon that will just crack the skull and would be a bit harder to kill a person than with the axe. And the swing of the baseball bat. Alright, and now for this, it didn't really cut the watermelon so much as it just knocked a large chunk out of it. But as with the other weapons, you, you would have been dead from the damage done to both your brain and the bits of bone in your brain from the skull. Now, the blood spatter, again, didn't really go all over this like the bullets. A lot of it landed on the bucket 
and what we did get down here, it didn't really splatter. It kind of hit it and ran down from here. It started about here, just kind of ran down the backdrop. In closing, all of the shots fired from guns were from 15 feet away, and all of the melee weapons, such as the bat and the axe, were used from about arm's length from the target. I had assistance from my father with the guns and the tools, and yeah, as this is probably the best analog I could find, best and cheapest analog I could find to replace a human head. And I think that it was a rather good analog. And so, closing of the video, this is the, about what would happen to your head. And that's about all will be left. And it's the end of the experiment.